what's going on guys welcome to the channel in today's video i will be making another tier list for support characters in tower of god new world but before i get started on the video make sure you guys comment like and subscribe and also turn that post notification bell so that you guys can always stay tuned as we'll turn to post new videos i'd really appreciate it and if you're new here on the channel i make various videos and guides on multiple games such as ether gazer so if you guys are interested in those games you can click the channel down below and start watching those videos but anyways let's get to it so today we have support characters now yesterday i made a tier list on tank characters so we're gonna do support characters and the first character that i'm gonna start off with is evan now evan is an ssr plus unit really amazing support unit like he is absolutely busted and the main reason why he's absolutely amazing is because of the immortality. The fact that he can basically provide a buff where your team won't die for a certain amount of time. Even if their HP is at 1%, they won't go below that 1% and they won't die because of his special skill. So Evan is an amazing unit. He's like one of the best supports in the game so far. He's an SSR plus though, so it's going to be really hard to get him. But if you do have Evan, I highly recommend you guys to invest in him because he will carry you long term in the game. He could carry you early game, mid game and late game. He's just an amazing unit. So Evan, right off the bat, S tier for sure. Amazing, broken, busted support unit for sure. Now for our next support unit, we have Bam. Now Bam, he is like a... He's like a buffing unit basically he doesn't provide you know any of that immortality stuff but he basically provides energy he provides an attack buff as well so he's like a really good unit in terms of buffing the best team that he's in is honestly the yellow team like you want to put him with hats you want to put him with evan because he's really good buffing up hats so he's mostly like an energy buffer and a defense buffer as well and also an attack buffer so if you guys want to know you know where he gets all these buffs from like how he procs all these buffs he does it when he does his second active which is prodigy wave controller when he does prodigy wave controller he will become immune to jolt and spends three seconds gathering the tower shinsu then infuses it into the ally with the highest attack the infused ally recovers 400 energy their attack increases by 80% and their defense increases by 80% until the end of the battle. That is such an amazing active because this active will last until the end of the battle, which is absolutely amazing. So you definitely want to pair Bam up with like a unit that has the highest attack. For example, Hats. If that unit has the highest attack, they will receive that buff that Bam will give them. So Bam, honestly, I will put Bam at A+. He is an amazing unit overall amazing support he's also the first character you get once you log into like when if it's your first time playing tower of god he is the first character that you will get so he is already like an amazing unit to start off with so highly recommend you guys to invest in bam he is an amazing support unit for sure the only reason why he's not s tier is because you know he's just not an ssr plus you know ssr plus is they're just amazing but anyways for our next support unit we have shibisu now shibisu shibisu is a yellow unit and he is not a bad support because for his passive he will buff up yellow element allies by 32 percent at the start of battle he will buff up their attack by 32 percent and that's honestly pretty good the biggest problem with shibisu is the fact that he dies quickly and the reason why is because as a support unit I would expect for him to stay in the back but instead he charges in into the battle and he just immediately dies and i feel like that's like the biggest problem with shibisu because there's moments when i really do want to try him but he just dies so quick and he just doesn't really work that much because he just jumps into the middle of the battle and just instantly dies so i feel like his kit is really good like his passive buffs up attack by 32% for yellow element users. His active dashes towards the enemy to do 900% of his attack as damage, stunning him for three seconds. The stun is nice, but the damage, he's a support unit, so I don't really see the point of him doing damage. I really see him as like a buffing type unit. 
and for his second active he throws like a shinsu bomb towards the most concentrated area of enemies dealing 600 percent of his attack as damage to enemies and decreasing their energy recovery by 90 percent for 10 seconds now that active i feel like for that active the best part about his second active is the fact that he can decrease energy recovery by 90 percent for 10 seconds that energy debuff is actually pretty good but i feel like in terms of doing damage he's not really good in terms of doing damage but in terms of support he's actually pretty nice and for his special skill he basically decreases the physical and magic resistance of the enemy with the lowest hp by 80 percent for 10 seconds he then commands all allies to attack the target shibisu recovers 100 percent energy if the target is defeated by the attack so his special skill is almost similar to huarun's except except he doesn't create a path he just commands everybody to just, you know, target a specific unit. And that's his special skill. So his kit is kind of similar to like, his kit is kind of similar to Jia Jia, Warun, and also Wangnan because Wangnan has like an AoE attack as well. So he has like a lot of, his, his kit is like a mixture, like a mixture of multiple units. And I feel like that's what I like about him. So honestly, I'm going to put Shibisu. I'm going to put him in a solid. Okay, if you can manage to make him survive on the battlefield, he is for sure an A tier. But if you can't manage to put him, if you can't manage to make him survive, he really won't provide any sort of value because he will just instantly die because of his first active. I feel like his first active just ruins his whole kit because he just rushes into the battle He's a support character, so his tank cap capabilities are pretty much low. So he won't be able to take that much damage. So I feel like Shibisu is a solid B tier. If you can make him survive, he is an A tier for sure. His kit is absolutely really good. But if you somehow, you know, if you're if he's somehow dying quickly, like he you just can't find a way on how to make him survive, he's a B tier. So Shibisu. He's a solid character if he survives, but if he doesn't survive, he provides no value to your team. So Shibisu's a solid B tier for sure. Now for our next support unit, we have the one and only Kuhn. Kuhn is just goaded. Like he, he's one of my favorite supports. My favorite support is still Waru, but Kuhn is just absolutely amazing. I feel like his potential is just, I feel like he's just an underrated character because his kit is just really amazing so for his passive he can basically increase the attack of purple element allies by 32 percent at the start of battle so his passive is similar to shibisu because shibisu could buff up yellow element allies by 32 percent at the start of battle as well and for kun's active he basically summons like a barrier and that barrier will basically provide a shield to your ally unit and that shield will basically grant an alice not an ally, not an alice, but an ally status effect immunity and restore their energy by 40. So not only will that shield create like a status effect immunity, it will also provide energy for that character. So that character will regain more energy once they get that shield. So not only is he a solid support character in terms of buffing up attack and also providing barrier, he's also a battery unit because of his active skill. For his second active, he basically seals the enemy for eight seconds and he's able to like knock them down for two seconds so he has like a some type of stun mechanic to his like second active would make like which makes him actually pretty solid but i feel like the best part about kun is his special move mystery sphere he will basically create a huge aoe field and in that aoe field your those enemy units will be stunned for like a solid second but it will it will last for like three seconds they will literally just stand there you can literally nuke that opponent's team instantly once you activate kun's special move his special move is deadly the fact that he can stun a huge group of people at once is just absolutely insane kun by far a plus for sure he's not on you know of course he's not on evan's level but he's on i'll put him above bam actually i'll put him above bam because Kuhn is just amazing, especially in a purple team. In a purple team, he's just absolutely really good. So Kuhn, really good character. Now for our next character, we have Narei. Now Narei is basically this girl right here with the blonde bowl cut type here. Um, she is like a battery unit. 
she provides energy to your allies and she also i think she gives i need to read her kit again yeah so her passive every time Naray uses a skill that ally with the highest attack recovers 400 energy so she's basically a battery unit she provides a lot of energy to your unit who has the most attack so if you have if you're using a unit like hats she's going to recover his energy by 400 and for her active she deals 200 percent of her attack as damage four times to the enemy who has dealt the most damage to allies each hit steals 200 of their energy and locks them for two seconds her active snatch is so good the fact that she can steal energy from enemies is absolutely amazing and it, it comes in clutch sometimes now for her second active, she finds the enemy's weakness, decreasing her defense by 48% for 10 seconds. Now, I think I didn't mention this. For Kuhn, Kuhn has a similar active as well. Kuhn can basically debuff your enemy's defense by like 48%, I think, as well. So her kit is almost similar to Kuhn. So she's able to basically take, like, basically shred enemy's defenses for 10 seconds by 48%, which is absolutely amazing. And for her special move, she attaches, when she creates a Shinua, attaches itself to the ally with the lowest HP, blocking all skill attacks three times for eight seconds. In addition, it deals 400% of her attack as damage to the attacker and stuns them for three seconds. So she basically creates this shield, and this shield will protect this ally unit from skill attacks. And when that shield is on your ally unit, that shield will also stun enemy units by like for three seconds so her whole kit she seems like a pretty solid character in terms of you know providing a bat she seems like a solid battery unit like she provides energy she steals energy and she also provides a shield that can stun enemies so i'm gonna honestly put her out on a tier as well the reason why i'm not putting her in a plus is because right now there's not really like a solid team where you can put her in like the only team that she's really good in is the purple team. Like you can pair her up with, um, you can pair her up with like a, I don't know. You can either pair her up with the Rachel. I don't know, but there's not really a lot of teams you can put her in because you have characters like Bam and Kuhn. I feel like Bam and Kuhn, like their kit is way more better than her. I feel like the only thing that's really good about this character is the fact that she provides that 400 energy. So she provides a lot of energy, but I feel like she's an A tier because there's a lot of other support units that their kit just basically, their kit is just way more better than her. But she's a solid character. Like if you guys are, like if you guys want to invest in her, you should because she's a battery unit and she's honestly pretty solid. So she's not, she's not a bad character. She's like in between in this tier list. Now the next support we have and the best support in the game, in my opinion, is none other than Huarun. Huarun, I don't even understand how she's a support character. I don't understand how a character that can do 2 million damage is considered as a quote-unquote support character. I just don't understand that. Like, she just, she just does so much damage, it's crazy. Huarun, she's like the... She was like the first, if you guys don't know, she's the first new SSR unit that came into this game. She's an amazing support unit. So for her passive, she basically she basically inflicts a mark on an enemy, a weakness mark. And that weakness mark on the enemy, whenever your ally units attack that weakness mark, that ally unit will receive a crit buff and also an attack buff. So she is honestly an amazing. Her passive is just phenomenal in terms of support. And she also increases your teammates' energy by 400 whenever the weak point enemy is defeated. So whenever she inflicts a mark, a weak point mark on the enemy, and your ally unit defeats that enemy, that ally will receive 400 energy. And she finds a new weak point target. So she, she will not only focus on one person, she's going to put a bunch of weak point marks on multiple enemies. So she's honestly pretty good. So that's her passive. For her active guides, guidance, she creates a pathway and that pathway will increase your ally unit's swiftness and they will all focus on the unit that that pathway is like, if the enemy is standing on that pathway, 
uh, all your ally units will immediately move to that unit, to that enemy unit. So basically, Guard's Guidance is like a swiftness buff, and also she commands your ally units to focus on a specific target. For her second active, Delay Tactic, she does so much damage with this, for her second active is absolutely insane. So she basically throws her staff, dealing 800% of her attack as damage and de decreasing the swiftness of enemies in its path by 40 for 10 seconds. If the target is a weak point enemy, they are stunned for 2 seconds. She does so much damage with her second active, it's insane. Like, she's able to literally one-shot with her second active. So her second active is just phenomenal. And of course, I feel like the best part about her kit is her special move. I feel like the best part about Huarun is the fact that whenever she uses her special move, she provides an AoE shield. And that AoE shield takes so much damage, she be she becomes invincible when she casts her special move, basically. And whenever you have any ally units around her, they will also receive that shield as well. So that's basically her entire kit. She's a solid character, really amazing support character. Honestly, I'm putting her up there with Evan for sure. She is one of the best SSR supports in the game right now. She is literally the best SSR support so far. Absolutely amazing. If you pair her up with Evan, uh, she will literally help Evan with that immortality. Like for example, if because Evan will basically give her that invincibility and she will survive longer on the field. And if you guys haven't watched my most recent videos, you want to have a lot of copies on Huarun because Huarun, if you don't have a lot of copies on her, she can be really squishy. But if you have a lot of copies on her, she'll be a really, really solid and she will a really solid unit and she will carry you long term in this game. So Huarun, S tier for sure. Now the next support we have is the newest SSR character, Gia Gia. Now Gia Gia is busted. She is just a phenomenal support. Really amazing. I wouldn't put her on the same tier as Huarun and Evan because Huarun and Evan, they're just on a whole nother level. But honestly, I will I will put her on the same level as Kuhn and Bam. I will I will put her in between. Yeah, actually, I'll put her on top of Kuhn, no matter of fact. She's just an amazing unit overall. Like her kit just has everything. She provides an attack buff to red element units. So if you're using a Huarun, she will buff if your she will buff your Huarun's damage by a ton. She will also provide a shield and she will also provide energy and she also provides healing. So this unit is just absolutely amazing, really amazing character. And for her second active, she has like a, a stun, like a flashing where she's able to blind the enemy for like a couple for like eight seconds. So she also has some type of, you know, stun active as well. So. She is a really solid character. If you guys, you know, if you guys are struggling with your support units, if you guys are struggling with healing, she's a really awesome unit in terms of healing and providing that shield and also providing that attack buff. She's a really solid unit overall. Now for our next unit, we have Lero. Now Lero, he's a blue unit. I feel like blue units have been completely lacking in the game so far i feel like blue like the blue element has to be the worst element in the game so far because all blue element units like every single unit that's blue they're just trash except for the ssr plus is like that imagine but this guy he looking at his kit his passive is solid the fact that he can buff up blue element allies attack by 32 percent that's pretty solid so if you're pairing him up with the dead imagine he will literally buff up her damage that's not bad, but I feel like compared to other characters like a Rachel, Kuhn, Quarun, there's just so many other units that are just better than him. And investing in him will be just be a big mistake because for his first active, he basically scans the battlefield and decreases all enemies defense by 40% for 10 seconds. Now, that's not bad. The fact that he's able to provide that defense shred is honestly not that bad, which allows your team to do more damage. And enemies with decreased swiftness see an additional 20% decrease to their defense. So if you're using a Huarun with him, he's basically going to decrease that unit's defense by like 60% because that unit swiftness is decreased. So they will receive that additional 20% debuff, defense debuff. 
For his second act, the Shinsu Wall, he summons a wall of Shinsu to, to deal 620% of his attack as damage to nearby enemies, knocking them back. In addition, he decreases their swiftness by 40 for 10 seconds. So his first and second active both pretty much pair well because for his first active, if the unit, if the enemy unit has like a decrease swiftness, they will re receive that 20% additional defense debuff. So his second active pairs up well with his first active. For his special move, he do, like basically his entire kit just revolves around decreasing swiftness and decreasing defense. And I feel like that's not bad, but is it good enough? That's the real question. So reading his kit so far, I will honestly put him at a solid. I will put him at a solid B tier behind Shibisu. I feel like Shibisu has way more value than him. But looking at his kit so far, he just seems like a solid B tier because all I'm getting from his kit is that he just, he's able to stun for three seconds. He provides that defense debuff and he provides that swiftness debuff and that's basically it. There's really nothing else he can do. His damage is pretty much bad. So in terms of support, he's not bad, but there's just other characters that are way better than him. For example, Gia Gia, Huarun. So investing in him would be honestly a big mistake because his kit is just not enough to make him, you know, outshine all these other units. So he's a solid B tier for sure. His kit can have potential, but for now, I don't know, man, because blue units are just lacking a lot. Now for our last support unit, we have this healer right here, Lozelle. Now Lozelle is basically a healer. She is also a green unit. And for her passive, she increases the attack of green element allies by 32% of the start of the battle. So almost similar to Kuhn and um, Gia Gia. For her first active, she's able to tie up the enemy with Shintu to deal 620% of her attack as damage. Stunning them for 2 seconds, the tied up enemy's defense decreases by 40%. So she has a defense decrease and also she's able to stun for 2 seconds. So her first active is not bad, really decent. For her second active, she restores the HP of two allies with the lowest HP percentage by 600% of her attack and increases their defense by 40% for seven seconds. If those allies are green element, she instead restores HP by 1000% of her attack and increases their defense by 80% of her for seven seconds. So her active, her second active really says that you want to put her in a green team because of that 1000% HP restoration. For her special skill, she creates a Shinsu Whirlpool that knocks back enemies and removes debuffs and status effects from her allies. The Shinsu Whirlpool area restores allies HP by 200% of her attack every second for 5 seconds. So looking at her entire kit, this unit seems pretty solid so far like you really want to put her in a green team because of that like i said because of that 1000 percent hp restoration but other than that she has she's able to literally cleanse your entire team cleansing is really good so let's say your team is going to get stunned by coon she will literally cleanse that stun and then your team will just not be stunned anymore so her kit really has potential because she has that green element buff as well. She's able to buff attack. So she is a solid A tier for sure. The main reason why she's an A tier is because right now there's not really that much green units that can do a lot of damage. The only green unit that can do a lot of damage is honestly Yuri. Yuri does a lot of damage and I feel like she's like the only unit that is capable of Actually, Yuri and the sleepy guy right here. I can't find him. There's a sleeping unit. So, yeah, there's a sleeping unit. I don't understand why this tier list doesn't happen. But there's only two green units that can do a lot of damage. So I feel like those two green units, if you pair her, if you pair them up with her, they will do a lot of damage. And also, they will be able to tank and survive more on the field because of that 1000% HP restoration anyways that's my tier list what do you guys think put your thoughts down below in the comment section i'd like to see how you guys feel about this tier list 
but anyways i'll be leaving the video at that uh make sure you guys put your thoughts down below and make sure you guys stay safe stay hydrated and i'll be seeing you guys soon peace